All I can say, say is, is that, that the, the fake, fake news just doesn't, doesn't get it, do that. they? <laughs> and the fake news, they really love to give. Ginny Thomas, she's the latest target, uh, Clarence Thomas's wife. Why are they hassling her? Well, she's a woman who's pro-Trump, married to Clarence Thomas, and uh, yeah, there are a lot of reasons why they don't like her. Why they don't like us. Take a look at this. She texted um, Mark Meadows at one point, help this great president stand firm, Mark. You are the leader with him. Who is standing for America's constitutional governance at the precipice? It was all fine. I read it. She was like reading the news, and she's a important person or married to an important person in Washington, it makes sense that she would know the chief of staff and she was just rooting them on, encouraging them. What does Washington do? Have congressional hearings. Let's see, this is the building confidence in the Supreme Court through ethics and recusal reforms, subcommittee on courts, intellectual property and the internet. This is all driven by the Ginny Thomas text messages, but it backfired on them in a big way. Hakeem Jeffries, seen as a rising star uh, on the left, I don't think so. I don't think so at all. Uh, he's trying to give a former OMB deputy director in the Trump administration a hard time. Look what happens. And I believe, uh, Mr. Powell, let, uh, you've echoed a similar sentiment. I think your quote is, many on the left hate Justice Thomas because he is a black conservative who has never bowed to those who demand that he must think a certain way because of the color of his skin. What evidence do you have to support that uh, incendiary charge? Uh, when Chairman uh, Benny Thompson calls him an Uncle Tom because of his views on voter ID and affirmative action, when in fact more black Americans support voter ID and in, with respect to affirmative action in college education, they're 62% opposed to it. So, so that is the most vile, disgusting thing you can say. And, and, and so, yes, that's, 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 that's the evidence. That's the evidence time. I just reclaiming, gave you. reclaiming my time. Yes. There are a lot of vile, disgusting things that can Will be. Will you just ask me for an example? The, the notion that that is, right, when some members on this side of the aisle and others have been called the N word throughout different points of our life belies uh, the point that you have a particular bias. Uh, and it's an overstatement, which is not surprising when you look at the balance of your testimony. And if Chairman Benny Thompson uh, has an observation to make, uh, he's entitled to free speech. You apparently believe that Jenny Thomas, regardless of how many conflicts uh, she has, is entitled to her own political opinions uh, as well. Uh, Can I give you another example? No. <laughs> uh, that'll do. Uh, you're excused. Uh, I just lost big time. You want some evidence? Here's some evidence. Damn. Hey, by the way, uh, did you hear that snide comment? You, apparently you believe that Ginny Thomas is, uh, uh, has the right to her own political views. Isn't Michelle Obama entitled to her own political views? Are we going to have a hearing about that? By the way, the N-word that he mentioned, um, why is it that the N-word is kind of a thing for, well, a good chunk of the world? They can sing it. They can call each other the N-word. It's a term of endearment sometimes. Yet it's the worst thing that can possibly be said if someone else... Look, I don't want to say that word. It's offensive to me. I happen to not like uh, Kanye. I like a couple of Jay-Z songs, the one about New York, but I'm no expert. You know... It's a really silly place. Hakeem Jeffries, uh, wow, huh? All right, also this, if you're in New York City, uh, why not go for it? Why not make a run for it if you're pulled over by the cops? Because resisting arrest, we've been told, is not illegal. It almost looks like a bad TV show, but that guy running, given the messaging and the policies we're getting from the New York County District Attorney right here, Manhattan, Alvin Bragg, the following charges will not be prosecuted under any circumstances resisting 
arrest, resisting arrest. Now, the fine print, you could argue, may or may not have applied in this case, but the messaging from this guy has been decriminalized just about everything, including armed robbery. Just as long as you don't pull the trigger, we don't have to make a big deal out of it. It's tougher than ever to be a police officer. Everybody sees it. They get so much disrespect from the woke left. I mean, look at these images. This is uh, tough stuff. And you know what makes it even harder? So many people have cell phone cameras and they just wanna go viral and catching a cop making a mistake or I don't know, just catching a cop doing his job maybe, you'll be able to go viral. You see that? They're not helping, they're not assisting. They just wanna go viral and catch a cop, who knows, right? Well, it's one thing if a couple of punks on the side of the street wanna do that, but what if the mayor of the city of New York is actively calling on New Yorkers to try to get cops in trouble? That's what Eric Adams is trying to do. And one reason I believe he's trying to do it, he's a frustrated cop. He had a bad record as a police officer himself. He did not do very well. And uh, he was basically anti-cop. He didn't like the police department and the police department didn't like him. So now that he's the mayor through a weirdo fluke, this is what he's preaching. I am disappointed in the deployment of transit police personnel. I've shared this before. All of you who take the train, you know you walk downstairs and you see five transit officers standing at the booth looking at their phones. Just can't, we just can't continue to do that. We are going to start taking very aggressive actions to make sure police are patrolling our subway system and not patrolling their iPhone. And so you are going to see a visible difference in policing in the next couple of weeks to get those officers who are not doing their job to join those officers who are doing their job. And you need to see that. And if you see it, send me a picture, let me know. Because I go to that, that district the next day and see exactly what's happening, send me a shot. New Yorkers, you see that? Send me a photo and I would be at that station. That's how he's gonna spend his time, chasing after employees who he thinks should be not on their phones. By the way, police have official phones that they have to look at from time to time. You notice he said transit cops, because he used to be a transit cop, but now he's in charge, right? This is what he's gonna do. Um, this is what you get when the fake news anoints somebody to be mayor because of identity politics. 300,000 employees here in New York City, something like an $85 billion budget, and he's gonna spend his time trying to catch cops on the phone. Good luck with that. All right, back to Joe Biden, just a snippet, okay? The, uh, the issue with the word kleptocracy. We're gonna seize their yachts, their luxury homes, and other ill-begotten gains of Putin's kleptocracy, uh, yeah, kleptocracy, and klep the guys who are the kleptocracy. It was ugly, really bad. So uh, going around the cable channels today, I didn't see anyone talking about it. Well, here and on the right. But I think this is a mainstream media issue, right? I mean, look, that was bad. Donald Trump gave a great speech. It was in 2020 at West Point. I just happened to catch it. It was on a Saturday and I thought, wow, what? Well, that was a fantastic speech. I was really impressed. After this speech, for some reason, they had him go down a ramp and uh, well, he took it slow. You can hear Donald Trump said he never wanted to be a uh, Gerald Ford. He was never gonna fall down. That's actually a pretty smart thing to do, don't you think? A slippery ramp, take it easy. No verbal issues during the speech the mainstream media went nuts. President Trump is facing some new questions about his health after an unsteady walk down a ramp after his commencement speech at West Point. He walked slowly and cautiously down a ramp at West Point on Saturday. Americans have every reason to question his health. Obviously what's being raised as well in this focus on his health and, and whether he's impaired. He's looking down at his feet the whole time. Is, he, is, he, is, that, is this a balance issue? Is, does he have a hard time feeling his feet? Now, we saw President Biden today. I mean, was that a stroke? 
Was that an aneurysm? What's going on there? I don't know, but something's going on. And not a peep, not a word, no panels, no analysis. And not even when he fell, not once, not twice, but three times. Here we go, ready? One, two, three. Ooh, I remember that too. <laughs> Everybody ignored it. We really, it does seem like a parallel universe, right? Or we're red-pilled, right? They're in the matrix, we're not, I don't know. All I know is I'm in touch with the truth. And if you're watching this, so are you. 